Welcome, my name is Dominic Noble. I'm so appreciative of all these new H2B visa subscribers that we have, that is subscribers who are really interested in our H2B visa content. So I wanted to give you something new. So this is something that we're calling the H2B report, where I'm essentially gonna sit in front of the camera and tell you what I learned this week or what I know this week about what's happening in the H2B world. It's going to exist as a separate podcast that uh, under our channel here at Damian Noble, Immigration Attorney. So I hope you can check it out. I know we do a lot of different content here. We have Any Given Day, we have 10 billion people, we have um, kind of like learning videos, but we're trying to organize that a bit because we understand that people are subscribing for different things. So hopefully you enjoy this. So what I have here in front of me, you should be seeing the flag portal. The flag portal for the Department of Labor is where you can go to check out the latest processing times for the H-2B visas in this cycle. Currently, we're in the October 2024-2025 cycle, which is the first half fiscal year cycle for 2024-2025. And on July 1st, you can see that we had uh, close to 40,000 visas that were applied for in the first three days. Uh, all those visas were put into a lottery and some went into Group A and some went into Group B. Currently, what you can see is that all visa applications or all certification applications in Group A were already processed by the Department of Labor. You can see that in the second to last column, which shows that either uh, all applications either received a notice of acceptance or a notice of deficiency. And in the last column, you can see how many have full certifications. So right now, full certifications are just under 4,000. This is as of Friday, August 9th while uh, the remainder are under NOD or have just received notice of acceptance, meaning that they're in that 15 business day recruitment period. You can also see under group B in the second to last column that about 43%, well, third to last column tells you about 43%, second to last column tells you that there are um, currently about 3,500 or so applications that have received notice of, accept notice of acceptance or notice of deficiency for group B. So what does this mean? Well, you may know that 33,000 new visas are going to be given out for an October 1st start. What's interesting about the October cycle is that a lot of these visas don't need new visa numbers. There's a lot of returning workers in the cycle, much more than the April cycle uh, as a percentage. Uh, for, me, for me, for example, I file a lot of extensions for things like nannies and caregivers uh, during the October one, for the October one start. Those folks don't need new visas. Um, what this means is that probably everything that has an N notice of acceptance as of right now, August 9th, Group B and Group A is going to be, are going to be able to get a new visa if that's what they want. Um, why? Well, 33,000 visas are officially available, but what USCIS does is they create an additional float that's uh, not officially on the books. So they usually end up approving about 37,000 visa applications for first-time visa applications. So what I'm telling you right now is if you're in Group A or Group B and you have a notice of acceptance right now this week, I think you're going to be eligible for new visas. Now, if you're not there yet, if you're in that Group B, you were unlucky, uh, I still think you have a chance at getting one of the new visas, even if you're approved uh, next week, because um, the numbers just look so favorable uh, in terms of what I'm seeing. The other update is what's going wrong at DOL, what's going right. So let me start with what's going right. Uh, this is the first year where really I feel amazing about the nanny and the caregiver side of H2B program. Last year in a uh, appeals case called Helping Hands 1 and Helping Hands 2, I was really able to establish for my caregiving clients a standard uh, for approval under the H2B program for those facing end-of-life care. This year, uh, this week, I just found out we had uh, got an approval for a case I thought was frankly unwinnable. And I think it's because the DOL officers are now finally accustomed to seeing caregiving applications. And GASP, I think they have hearts and they're seeing that these are worthy applications to be approved, right? Caregivers are coming in for some of our uh, most vulnerable Americans, people who really need help at home. And so that's been a really big positive. Same thing for nannies. Nannies, I think, are now an accepted part of the program. I won a victory at the appeals level at Mystic Angels LLC uh, versus the Department of Labor last year. And I've been able to put the language that I developed in that application into all applications this year, and I haven't gotten any NODs back. The one thing that you should be on the lookout for, you're probably getting a lot of um, you're probably getting minor NODs in a lot of your applications because there's been additional scrutiny 
this cycle on job order contents. The, both the local state workforce agencies and the, and the uh, CMPC, so the uh, Chicago National Processing Center, where all the H2B applications are sent, are being very strict about job order wording. And I've had a bunch of these uh, small technical NODs. What you should do when you get that is just amend the job order, send it back in immediately to both your SWA and that local center. The, the horror stories we are hearing aren't happening at DOL, it's at USCIS. So USCIS transitioned to processing all applications in the Texas Service Center starting for this April 1, 2024 cycle that we just passed. It's been a bit of a mess, it's been a bit of a learning period. And so what's happening right now is that people are sending in USCIS applications without something called the CAA 8 addendum, which is for only required if you're asking for additional workers. USCIS, we do have multiple reports of those being sent back erroneously. Just know if that happens to you, you should just send your application back to USCIS and say, hey, I don't need a CAA 8 uh, uh, you know, appendix attached to this application because I'm not asking for returning workers, I'm asking for a new worker for October 1st. So that is happening. The one negative of DOL um, that I'm seeing, and this is something for a different video, but these registration numbers. So there are favored industries uh, under the H-2B program and unfavored. I can tell you right now that welders are having a lot of trouble. My welding clients are having a lot of trouble. We actually had a registration number deactivated even though it didn't meet any of the 655.12 Code of Federal Regulations requirements or, or triggers for getting a registration number deactivated. Instead, what the government is doing is they are deferring to something, uh, to a decision that they're, to the Padilla decision, which says that uh, essentially, the Department of Labor has wide latitude to only consider the registration number as one part of a temporary need registration. So if you are in welding uh, or other unfavored uh, industries like construction and you have a registration number, particularly for peak load, my one tip that I'm learning and that I'm going to be implementing going forward is to make sure that you treat every application like a new application and include supporting evidence. You do not have the luxury, I'm saying right now, of like a favorite industry employer like landscaping, just putting in your registration number and hoping for an approval. Department of Labor is apparently not wanting to see that happen. Now, do I want to change that? And would I love to take Padilla and uh, have it be more developed in a federal court setting? Department of Labor, if you're watching this, I sure as hell do. So, uh, in short, uh, if you are currently waiting a notice of acceptance, hey, don't lose hope. If you're in Group B, don't lose hope. I think you can still get there. If you have a notice of acceptance right now, I think you're golden for the October 1st cycle. Those of you thinking about H2Bs for next year, for the April cycle, call me. It's time to think about prevailing wages. You can get those in right now. We can get you set up and started for April 1st. So we're constantly thinking about the next thing. Now, if you don't get one of your uh, new workers, remember you can still get returning workers and you can still try to find a worker that's in the country because they don't count towards the cap. So you should absolutely go through with your full certification. For those extenders out there, you shouldn't be too worried about these numbers. I have extenders who might not get approved until August and they're gonna be just fine as, because you can still get an approval in August, an approval in early September uh, from the DOL, go through 15 days of recruitment in time to file an extension with USCIS. So I hope this has been helpful. This is the H2B report, our new sort of video podcast here on YouTube. Thank you for subscribing for YouTube, con for YouTube H2B content with me, and I hope to bring you more value in the weeks to come.